Hey violinists of YouTube. In today's video, we're gonna be exploring the college audition process. It could be a little nerve wracking, it could be a little scary, but I wanna share my tips and tricks on how you can have a good college audition season this year. So stick around to the end of the video, you don't wanna miss it. Hi there, my name is Eric, I'm a violinist. Thanks so much for coming across this channel. If you haven't done so already, please make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification so that way you get notified for when new videos come out. It also helps me out as a content creator to provide more free videos for you. Today we're going to be talking about five things for you to take note as you dive into college audition season. And it can get a little nerve wracking because you're all of a sudden making a very big life decision to get into music and congratulations for making that decision. It's a huge step forward and I know that a life full of music and studying music and at the collegiate level is a very rewarding experience. So I applaud you for taking that big leap of faith. Looking back on my experience into the whole college audition process, the first thing I did that you should do is talk to your teacher. Your teacher, your private teacher knows you the best in your private lessons. You've been with him or her for the last you know, few years. They know how you play. They know what level you're at and they might even make some suggestions as to what kind of repertoire you might wanna play for the college audition process. So I would recommend talking to your instructor, your violin teacher, to get the best opinion on what you should do to prepare for this process. Once you've had that conversation with your teacher, then you wanna do your research. Researching different institutions around the world is a good next step for you to really take note of this college audition process. This is like an overwhelming step two, I would say. For me, when I was doing this college audition process, the second step of like trying to find out which music school is the right fit um, was actually really overwhelming for me. So when you do your research, I want you to notice a few things. I want you to notice, um, is there a lively music community in this school and in this area that you're going to be going for. Because if you're going into school for performance, like I did, you want to make sure that there are performance opportunities, right? Not just inside the school, but also outside the school. So that way you can build your professional experience in and out of school. And I think that is super valuable that we're starting to see more, even in the job market right now in 2021, fall of 2021, we're experiencing a large, large pool of jobs being open right now. And this is a great opportunity for you to be marketable in your field. And people are going to recruit you depending on how much experience you have. Next thing I would research is the course load. You know, what does the course load look like? What do the classes look like? What kind of topics will you be exploring? What kind of topics are required out of your performance degree? Each conservatory, each music school has a different set of classes that are more or less aligned with the same kind of topics, but there might be some electives that will help you get to, to the next step. So yeah, I would, I would do your research on those courses and those electives. Something that I would also do your research on, something that actually helped me as a musician is the diversity of the student body. If you have a lot of diversity, you can learn a lot more from your peers. So that is kind of like a little bonus that I wanna add for you, is that if you have a diverse student body coming from different countries and it's very international, you're gonna learn a lot more than you have a specific kind of student body. So I would really um, encourage you to explore that as well. This next step kind of could be step 2B, but I'm making this a separate step because it's so important, is to find the right teacher. You want to find a teacher that will align with your goals, will align with your playing style, because many different teachers have different teaching styles. Even though this person may be uh, that you're researching teaches at a good institution or what you might think is a good institution, that teacher may not be for you. Doesn't matter what the institution is, what matters is the teacher. And if the teacher and the institution both match what you want out of your uh, collegiate ed education in music, then that is what you should be going for. You wanna make sure that you get kind of hit two birds with one stone, that, that the university or the college or the conservatory is really good and also the teacher is very good. So that's a really big step three. And in addition to that, I would add that if you have the opportunity, if you have the ability to have trial lessons with these teachers, I recommend that you do so. So that way you're not at the audition and then requesting a trial lesson because you know at that point you're like you're in audition mode and you're traveling to different places around the country and around the world. It can get very exhausting and it could be uh, very tiring. So I would recommend getting a trial lesson with a teacher 
before your audition. So that way, you know, you can get a better idea whether or not this teacher is a right fit for you. I remember thinking that there's this one school that I got into. I'm like, oh, this is a great institution, but the teacher, you know, doesn't really align with my goals and my values. So I actually chose another institution, another school, and the teacher and the school really meshed well together and my, my values actually aligned with the values of the school. So that's something that I would really encourage you to explore. So we did research, teachers, classes. Um, the next one is the goal. You have to make sure that your goals align with your teachers and your goals align with the goals of the institution. You're gonna be spending four years practicing in school, in ensembles. You wanna make sure that these four years are well spent. So are these goals of the institution align with your goals? Do the goals that you have also align with the student body's goals? This is crucial because you don't wanna make a decision you know, in the first year and all of a sudden, oh my gosh, I made a mistake. I made a huge, huge mistake. I actually don't wanna go to school. Keep in mind that if you wanna transfer schools, a lot of these credits in conservatories and music colleges are not transferable. Some of them are, but a lot of them aren't. You kinda of have to start from square one from freshman year. Like if you finish your full freshman year and you're like, well, I don't like this institution, then you apply somewhere else and then you get in somewhere else, it's very unlikely that they will accept you as a sophomore. You will have to go back through their system, through their curriculum as a freshman. And that can be very frustrating. So I encourage you, I implore you, make sure that your goals are aligned. Last but not least, and this is a big one, check the price of the school. We're kind of in an epidemic of student loan debt in the United States. It's really bad. You want to have good value in your education. And of course, if you are at a level where you're able to get a scholarship, get as much scholarship as you can you know, and try to negotiate. Checking the price of the institution is actually very, uh, very, 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 very important because sometimes schools are gonna start overcharging for education and you're not gonna get that much value out of it. Or there are some institutions that offer the price, they offer the result, and that's what you pay. But check the price on what you can afford. I feel like the number one reason why musicians don't find success after school is because they're in student loan debt. I can't tell you how many people that I know who are struggling with student loan debt in the music field and they have dreams, they have goals like recording an album or starting a chamber ensemble. Student loan debt is a crisis in the United States. So if you can avoid student loan debt at all costs, do so because it's going to help you. And the reason why I say this is because orchestra jobs are becoming less and less available around uh, the country of the United States. Back when I was auditioning for orchestras, there were maybe 50 full-time positions available out of a pool of enormous amount of violins. So it's kind of like what my former violin teacher said, if you win an orchestra job, it's kind of like winning the Olympics and it's very, very difficult to achieve. However, musicians are going to be natural entrepreneurs after they graduate from school. So you're going to be spending a lot of time away from your instrument once you're like practicing and trying to create something of your own, like a nonprofit or et cetera. So if you can avoid the student loan debt to focus more energy and more time into your goals and into your craft and into your music, that is a huge thing. Let me know in the comments section, what are you nervous about or what are you excited about in the college audition process? I wanna know your thoughts and I wanna get this conversation going down below. If there's any video that you would like me to make, please again, put it down in the comment section below so that way I can make a video about it or I can directly respond to you. And if you like this video and you like the content that you found in this video, please make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and hit the bell notification so that way you get notified for when new videos come out. Again, it helps me out as a content creator to provide more videos like this for you. And be sure to check out other violin tutorial videos on the channel right over here and right over here to get started on some more violin videos. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next one.